So here we are at Andy's Auto Body Shop here in Flagstaff, Arizona, my hometown. It's been here for 40 plus years. So if anybody knows how to do this right, then they do. We're gonna meet the owner right now, Paul Borges, and he's gonna get me set up with the right tools and materials to get it done. What's happening, Joe? Hey, Paul, how's it going? Good, man, how are we doing? All right, I'm ready to get started. The first thing I like to lay down is the white. So I want to establish the shapes of each flame with this stencil and with the white where I won't be worrying about creating the shapes with the other colors. What a flame is, is it's this bunch of gas that, that would be the fuel and it's only the outer edge of that cloud of gas that is light and that is causing that reaction. So each one of these is like a bubble or or a little cloud and, and it can move around and change all kinds of shape, but it's just the outer edge of it that's lit up. So when I'm building a flame, a lot of times I'll build one at a time and I'll always want to have on every flame a left edge and a right edge, a top edge and a bottom edge. And even if I don't make it that visible, I still know that it exists because it's a little cloud of gas that's burning all around the outside, every side of it. I think the most important thing is that you have longer, straighter lines that are not zigzagging as much near the base where it's originating if you want it to look like it has this blowing direction. And then stick with your fireballs and more zigzagging swooping shapes as you get further away from where it's originating. So I'm going to want some of my areas to be completely saturated with white so I get my nice bright glow that fire has other areas I'm gonna leave almost all the way black just barely fog that over the reason I use white as a base to put all the color on top of is because you cannot create a brighter color than a bright color on top of white so show me your brightest yellow I'll show you an even brighter yellow when that one is on top of white so that's why I put that as a base to get the brightest effect possible with any color that I put on top of it. Another thing it does is it sets me up for really nice gradients and diverse hue differences. So if I have something going from white to black and then I put color over that, then you're going to have all of those different values showing through that color that's on top rather than just having each color that I mixed on top of each other. So I now have one color that's getting changed by all those values of black to white. So every color, the yellow, then the red, then whatever highlights I put on top are all getting affected by that base layer. So it's like each color times all of those different values. You end up with a much more realistic and diverse end product. So now that I'm done with the white, I move on to the yellow. And that yellow can be anything between yellow and red because red would be my next one. So I actually added red to that yellow to make it more of an orange hue. The way I decide what yellow to use is just what do I want my brightest yellowest part of my flames to look like in the end because I'm not going to go any yellower than that. So I'll add some red until it gets to a real light yellowish orange that represents my brightest areas. And then I'll fog that over everything. I just fog it over everything but less over my very bright white areas. And then I just fog it pretty evenly over everything else. I just don't go real heavy on the areas I want to be the brightest because I'm going to stay off of those with all the other colors as well. There's a little bit of a fog from the white going out off of the edges and that makes the flame look like it's glowing. So it's important to get everything that's white, even that light fog from the white, unless you're planning on painting over it with black because that colors the glow. When an object is glowing, sometimes the brightest area is washed out to pure white 
because the camera that's looking at it can't display that color. But it's the glow around the object that has all the color. So don't color your lines without coloring the glow that's around it. Now I had a tack cloth handy the whole time because I was having a lot of overspray stick to my surface. And once I paint over that overspray, it'll just glue it right to the surface. So I want to keep a, a tack cloth handy and after my areas have dried and they do dry quickly, I can just dust them off with that tack cloth or with, you know, you could try other kinds of soft cloth, but a tack cloth doesn't leave any lint on the surface. Then it's the red. I put the red over the yellow, but I might want to put more red on darker shadows so that I get a nice deep maroon color in the flames. And that gives me a lot of depth to my flames is having the color in the shadows. And I'll put the red over everything to some degree, except for my brightest highlights, where I also did a little bit less on the yellow because I want those to look almost white so that it looks like a bright glow. But that smooth gradient that goes from white to yellow to red is really important because natural light always changes color in that order as it's diffused or as it dims and fire also follows that same pattern. As it gets dimmer, it also tends more toward red, whereas it gets brighter, it tends more toward first yellow then white so it goes as it gets brighter it's red orange yellow white as it gets dimmer it's white yellow orange red then to black and so using these layers allows me to get all kinds of tones in that gradient because I set up the gradient on the first step after I do the red then I'm gonna have overspray on parts of the car where I don't want it so then I have to go back and touch up the black and as clean as I try to be with my stencil and everything, I still find that I want to go back and add black to really sharpen some of the edges of these flames. And that contrast looks really nice. And I can even do little bits of black where I have overspray and not cover all the overspray because when I put that little black in the middle of it, it looks like a deep shadow and the overspray looks like a flame then because I created an edge when I put that little spot of black. So it actually creates the look of new and deeper flames that I didn't even stencil out. I freehanded the black because I was nervous to hold the stencil against my freshly painted work. But if you wait long enough, then you can use a stencil or or it maybe if you're doing smaller scale work and you just have a lightweight stencil. So I use the black to clean up my work and redefine edges that I want to look good. And as I said earlier, I can come back and use the stencil. And that's the nice thing about building the flame out of the stencil is you'll have those shapes you made the flames with available and you can just hold it up and get the edges and use that on the black. But I freehanded it, which takes a lot longer because I want it to be real safe and not damage any of that very freshly painted work. If I was wanting to highlight these points here and make them even brighter than they are, which I do a lot of the time, then what I would do is carefully make my bright yellow lines along here. And then I would come back with not the yellow anymore, but something already mixed to an orange that's like the rest of this. Because I don't really need any gradients. I'm just addressing the bright area. And I'm gonna very carefully fog that orange over just the white area. I don't want it to overlap onto what I already have orange because it begins to fog out the detail of the white because this is produced by layers and so it's going to start to look like an orange halo around the area. But if you're careful, you can just do it on the white that you make. It just has to be done carefully. So I can add highlights by layering a really light shade of yellow and then a little bit of orange over that and add details to my work. But if I don't like something, just fog over it with black and add another flame right over it using the steps from the beginning. So that's my method that I think produces my most natural looking flames. And I hope that helps you with wherever you're at. But hey, my flames are not completely real looking. Of course, you can tell that they're painted. And just like anybody else, I'm always looking for that better way. So when I find another, I'll let you know.